out RBTN, as I have five seasons to bring a Lombardi back to New England. And if I fail, I have to amputate my pinky, sell it to science, and spend all that money on my coins. That's a lie. But I would have to buy the highest rated Patriot and discard him for a measly 100 coins. And we definitely don't want that. I mean, this is gonna be quite the difficult task, because this team is so bad. Now, the big question here is, do I just go ahead and trade away Mac and draft a quarterback next season? Because we're gonna need some big changes offensively. And there are some decent pieces on defense, but this is one of the least talented I think Bill's ever had. So if we do trade away Mac here, that means we probably tank this season, but get a really good draft pick and maybe get an extra good draft pick here for Mac. Now let's see what offers we get. And honestly, it's a lot worse than what I expected. Those were horrible. Now maybe I can grab somebody off the Falcons here since they are interested in Mac. So that was a little bit too ambitious. So maybe I just settle for a draft pick. Just out of pure curiosity, what do they say about the eighth overall pick? Admittedly, that's fair. So how about the second round draft pick instead? And it's still a decline, but we're making some progress. Now let's see if there's any other team out there that would have straight up give me their second. Maybe the Chicago Bears will. Their second round pick for Mac Jones, and it actually went backwards. But I do wonder if I can make this happen. Like, Devontae Parker is not in my long-term plan, so maybe this is enough to see the deal through. We'll submit it into the universe, and it was accepted. Now, maybe this team is bad enough to get the number one pick? Now, Kyle Duggar is another player with one year left on his contract that I wouldn't mind shipping away if we did get a really good offer in return. And again, it looks like these offers are complete trash. So maybe actually instead of trading them, we simply move Jabril Peppers over to free safety. See, that's already much better. And last move before the season starts, we get a second rounder and a fifth rounder from the Saints for Jalen Mills, Jones, Anthony Jennings, and a seven. The tank is officially on, boys, and I'm really hoping we do finish with a pretty bad record so we can get one of the top picks and draft our quarterback of the future that will take this franchise back to the promised land. So everything went to plan. Now, I really hope 3-14 and 14 was bad enough to earn the number one pick. The number one pick officially belongs to New England. So Safe to say our offense wasn't that efficient. My god, our defense was worse than the offense. So yeah, 21 interceptions will probably only get you about three wins. And we could not run the football for nothing. And honestly, out of the receiving core, like, Kendrick Bourne is probably the only guy I even want to bring back. Even Matthew Judon couldn't get to the freaking quarterback. At least we had three defensive rookies in the top 10 for Rookie of the Year. But one thing that does suck big time about tanking is it does mess with some of the development because everybody's morale is super low. I think Christian Gonzalez was his only team's bright spot. Now as we head into the offseason, this is where the real work begins. Maybe next year we can go on a Mickey Mouse run like the Bucks did this year. But now tough decisions are going to have to be made as we have 18 players ready to negotiate their contracts. And I meant it when I said tough decisions are gonna have to be made. For starters, Kyle Duggar. Yeah, bro, I wanna bring you back. You're an 86 overall. I'll give you a nice five-year contract and up your salary and bonus just a bit. Hopefully this is enough for him to re-sign. Thankfully one down, but still many to go. Now Michael here, I really, really need you to come back because you're going to be a staple of this offensive line. So for you as well, bro, I'll give you an even bigger six-year contract. I'll give you about 7.2 million per year and I'll up the bonus to 11 mil. Michael, please accept. Thank you. Now all of these these guys, I really don't care about. Bailey Zappi, you can go. But I think it's super important that we try and bring back Trent Brown for a couple more years. I mean, he's still a massive 86 overall. The problem, though, is he just doesn't have interest in returning. But I'll give him a solid offer, at least. We'll even go up to a $9.5 million bonus. Bump the salary a little more. You know what? I'll even make this a four-year contract. Just please come back. Thank you. Kendrick Bourne is another one. I already said I want him to come back. Or do I? Didn't think about the fact that he's going to start to regress and at the same time we could probably sign some better wide receivers in free agency and I still want to try and bring back some of these fellas. Now Hunter Henry I think I'm just going to give him the base offer and see what he says. You know what Hunter that's fair. That means we really do need to try and bring back Mike Gesicki. I'll give you a five year contract I'll leave the salary and bonus the same since he does have a lot of interest. Submit the offer and we officially have our tight end one. Now last fella I do have interest in re-signing 
here is Josh Uche, but he's another one that has no interest in returning. But I will give it a fair shot. I'll up the salary to six mil. I'll even give you a five million dollar bonus. So I hope to God this is enough. And apparently it was. So Hunter, Zeke, and the rest of these guys, they can just go. Like, I feel like we did a decent job. Hopefully we can sign some quality free agents here, which we have roughly 46 million to spend. And I'm not gonna lie, the free agent class is pretty freaking lackluster. Like, should I just save my money for next season's free agency? When did KJ Osborne become a superstar? So maybe based on that alone, we actually give him a decent little offer. I'll give you a five-year deal and up that cash just a tad. But as of now, we have the best offer. We probably do need a decent QB to be the backup quarterback to whoever we draft. I feel like Gardner Minshew would be the perfect candidate. We're the only one to even offer him. Now, we really do need a better right guard, and Ruiz is just sitting there for us, and he has a ton of interest in coming to New England, so maybe we can give him a little Mickey Mouse offer and he'll accept. In a battle, though, with two other teams. Now, we do need help at defensive tackle. Michael Pierce, like, I will give you a one-year contract. The Vikings are beating us, so I think I'm just gonna withdraw the offer. Now, we really do need some help at middle linebacker, and I think my favorite choice out there is probably Kenneth Murray. Brother, I'll give you a five-year deal and hopefully keep you around for a while. Those dang Vikings. You know what, bro? I'll turn this into a six-year deal. I'll up the cash just a little bit more. That's what I'm talking about. So I think we're good on these offers, and the only one I'm really worried about is Ruiz here. So let's submit and see if we get all four. We got Osborne and Kenneth Murray. Gardner Minshew hasn't decided yet. The freaking Lions stole Ruiz. Maybe I can get Kevin here on a one-year contract? I mean, it would be better than nothing. We're in a battle with the Cardinals. They freaking stole him too. Can Gardner make up his mind? Finally, he came to his senses. And honestly, the rest of this class is hot freaking garbage. But now it's time for draft day. Honest to God, I have no freaking idea what to do with the number one pick here. Because as much as I would want Caleb Williams, like I wouldn't mind actually trying out Drake May. So what I might actually try to do here is trade down and see what we can get. Like, let's see what offers are out there in the universe. The Bears are willing to give me their third, a first from next year, a third, and a sixth from next year. Not gonna lie, there's some pretty wild offers out there, like the Titans offering me three firsts. Rams also offering me three firsts. Oh man, I'm gonna have some tough freaking decisions to make here. So what if I went in here and just tried to trade back one spot with the Commanders, because they do have Sam Howe. I don't know if they would draft one of Caleb Williams or Drake May over him, but if they did, I'd be able to get the next guy in line. So maybe we could get something like a third round pick, maybe even a second. Like, what are the odds we could also get a player in return? Like, we do need defensive tackle pretty badly, and they have Deron Payne as their number two. So I, I know this is a lot, but if the commanders really wanted Caleb Williams, maybe just maybe they would actually do this. So I'm just gonna simply submit this into the universe and see what's said. Oh my god! Uh, we're about to complete an absolute freaking banger here. Like, you know what? Take one of my six, bro. I don't care at all. Submit this through, still declined. Dude, who's somebody you could take here? Take Cade Warner. I don't care. Take Michael Brandy from me. Is this enough to see the deal through? Yes, it was. What an absolute freaking banger. Honest to God, cannot believe we just had that get accepted. Now, the main question here is, did the commanders do all that to take Caleb Williams, and they went Brock Bowers. What the frick? They actually didn't even go quarterback there. So Caleb Williams and Drake May are still available. Like, this could be the draft that sets this franchise up to be a dominant force over the next freaking decade. Now, I'm still getting some pretty insane offers for the number two pick. Like, three more first. Like, that would be absolutely insane. But I do want to make sure I at least get one of those two quarterbacks. So maybe be here. The Bears want to move up one spot. Like, imagine we could actually fleece another team. Now, they really don't have any offensive linemen that I want. So, maybe we could just try and grab their other first round pick. I mean, I think this would 100% be worth it. And it's declined, but we can work with that. You want to take Adrian Phillips from me? Does this bump it up at all? Don't think so. So, I think it is going to take another pick, but I think that would 100% be worth it. Like, look how many seconds we have. So, let me put that six round 
ground pick out there. Is this enough? Don't think it budged. How about we offer a future fourth and maybe one of these fifths from this year? Come on, this has got to be enough. It's so close. There's surely gotta be a player that sees this deal through. Come on. This is really all I got. Sean, wait here. Please, man, be enough. Boo! Now, though, what if I offered 72 overall Adrian Phillips? Oh, my God. God. I'm gonna swap that 134 for 129 and see if that makes any bit of difference. No. Gosh dang it, dude. Like, what do I even do from here? Do I just give them both of my fifth round picks? I mean, I think it would be worth it for an extra first. And boys, it's officially been done. It was stressful, though. Now, is this where the first quarterback finally goes off the board? They went Marvin Harrison, bro. I don't even know what the frick to do at this point. Like, do I keep trading back? I I may one last time try to trade back two more spots with the Cardinals and see what the heck we can get here. Like, they have another top 10 pick. Like, I highly doubt they accept this, but I just want to see how close it is. It's about halfway. Now, what if I did throw in one of those second round picks that I have? Like, I would gladly take another top 10 pick. It's getting there, but I kind of feel like it's a little unreasonable. So, what if we just went ahead and got another second and maybe got something like a third from next year? It's in the yellow. So so if we took out that third, still declined. What if I swap my fourth? No. So maybe I just need to be smart here and take like their, maybe both of their thirds. Like, is this feasible? Not quite. How about a third and a fourth instead? Boo. But how about just the third round pick? God, they're stressing me out. All right, that is it. No more trading back. Now let's see if the Cardinals actually go QB here. They go defensive end. Now are the Packers going to be the one to go QB? What the heck is happening right now? I mean, I think it would be dumb to trade back again. So with the number five pick, do I go Caleb Williams or Drake May? I mean, Caleb's got some crazy key ratings and he is a scheme fit for us. Or do I go Drake May, who I've never drafted before? I mean, I think I just need to be smart and go with the first sure thing and take Caleb Williams with the fifth pick of the 2024 NFL Draft. We've for sure done some finessing though, boys, as I am ecstatic that we have another first round pick upcoming, but I do want to see where the heck Drake May gets drafted. I mean, I could have traded out apparently all the way to pick 10. Brother, he still hasn't been taken. This is absolutely insane to me. The Vikings didn't even take him. What in the world is going on right now? Titans gotta take him, right? No. Brother, we are almost at pick 20. And there he goes. Pick number 18. Finally, Drake May goes to the Raiders. I could have traded back so much more. That absolutely blows my freaking mind. Now, who do we take here with the 25th pick in the first round? I mean, there's still some pretty decent players available. Now, part of me does want to go ahead and get a receiver here to pair with Caleb Williams. Like, Xavier Worthy looks pretty worthy of a pick. Malik Neighbors looks real solid. God, I really don't think I could go wrong here but like, who do I take? Like, this guy from Washington looks really good. God, Malik Neighbors looks like such a monster. I think I gotta do it, Malik Neighbors. He's gonna be the pick. And he looks like an absolute athletic monster. Is that the wait to see what his overall is? But luckily, we have a ton of second round picks upcoming. We literally have the number one and number two pick in the second round. Now, the one position we need pretty badly is offensive guard. Now, the two guys I have my eyes on right here is this guy from UCF and Brandt. Banks. Like he's supposed to be a day three pick, but he looks like an absolute freak. Although Amari here, he is a scheme fit. So like, oh, he had a really good combine. He has really good core attributes too. I think I'm just going to go ahead and take him here. And it looks like we hit on a gym. We have the first, second, and third pick here in the second round. So I really can take whoever I want to. We could go ahead and add our running back of the future. You know what? Braylon Allen is a scheme fit. We could use another running back on top of Ramondre Stevenson. I think think we're to go with the running back and it looks like a good pick although he's not the fastest back in the world and our receiving room is so bad that I think I'm just gonna go with another receiver here but the question is which one because like they're all pretty good Xavier Worthy is so freaking fast I think I gotta do it I just gotta take him in he's too freaking fast not to take 97 speed by the way don't forget we have another second round pick upcoming now this offensive guard here from Arkansas does doesn't look too shabby, so... 
I think. I actually looks really good. I'm gonna go ahead and make the pick. He looks like another stud. Now we have the first pick in the third round. Another player here out of Arkansas. Eric Miller actually looks pretty freaking good for middle linebacker. Or do I go with Peyton Wilson here, who I know is a pretty good player. Fastest left outside linebacker. Like, we do need some outside linebacker depth. So Peyton Wilson, he's gonna be the selection, and it's our first non-hidden development player. He can still be a decent overall, though. Luckily, it's only three picks before ours. Now, we don't have any depth at tight end whatsoever. So, this guy, Easton Dean, like, I kind of want to take a shot on him. He actually looks like we took another L. So, we have the first pick here in the fourth round, which, hilarious enough, is our final pick of the draft. So, I've got to make sure I'm smart and make the best decision possible. Honestly, I think I'm just going to take a shot with this defensive end here from Texas A&M. Like, we need some more depth at defensive end. And he has good strength at least now it's time to see if our draft class was actually a bust or not if this was actually a good draft like this could set us up to go on a super bowl run in a couple seasons oh my god what a freaking draft i mean yeah the last two picks suck but my god God, dude, that might be my best freaking draft class ever. I mean, this offense now has so much potential. Do wish we could have made some better picks defensively, though. Although I do think all the solid picks on offense are about to set us up to make a few moves for the future. Like with all the young talent we have at receiver, I think we definitely can afford to trade away Juju now. Really, though, not the best of offers in return. Now, this fella for sure can be traded. Unfortunately, it didn't make the offers any better. Maybe Maybe we can improve our right end position? Brother, this is saying we could get Kayvon Thibodeau. Are you serious? Like, do I actually make this move? We just got Kayvon Thibodeau and a good, decent backup tight end. And just like that, the defense looks much better. I still, though, feel like there's a few moves that we can make to improve the team. Like, you know, trading for our center of the future. I'd like to thank DraftKings, an official partner of the NFL, for sponsoring today's video. And right now is the perfect time to get in on all the action. As right now, new customers who bet just $5 will get $150 in bonus bets instantly. And if you already signed up for DraftKings like yours truly, you can get a no sweat bet where you get a bonus bet back if your same game parlay doesn't hit. Now, if sports betting isn't available in your state, don't worry because you can still get in on all the action with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Sports, which I've personally been partaking in for over two years now, and I absolutely love it. You literally just build a team working under a salary restraint, and I'm telling you, bro, it is so much fun. You can download the DraftKings Sportsbook now by clicking the link in the description box below. As new customers who use my promo code RBT will get $150 in bonus bets instantly if you bet $5. That's promo code RBT only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Well, I want to thank you again for sponsoring today's video. And I'm thinking we should just go ahead and give the reins over to Braylon Allen this season. So curious what we could get in return for Ramondre. And we did end up getting rid of Ramondre for a future second and a fourth rounder from this year. After signing a few depth pieces, this is how your starting offense is going to look. And here's your starting defense, which the team's now at an 83 overall with an 81 offense and an 87 defense, which the team might still struggle a little bit here in year two, but the team is so young that they're going to get better and better maybe by year three we can already be super bowl contenders honestly anything over like eight or nine wins i'll take this year a playoff appearance would be a bonus well i'll gladly take a 12 and 5 season i think it's safe to say didn't really expect that this year i mean we didn't have the best of offenses here but we did have a top five defense and our offensive struggles were definitely not because of caleb williams because as a rookie the man throws for 40 touchdowns only 12 picks completed 69% of his passes and threw for 4,200 yards. Definitely think he won Rookie of the Year. So the offensive woes definitely stem from the running game, but Braylon Allen will get better as time goes along. I mean, 13 touchdowns is still solid, but that's a sucky 3.4 yards per carry. And we definitely had our receivers ball out this year. Our rookie Xavier Worthy eclipsed 1,000 yards and 14 receiving touchdowns. He had Malik Neighbors grab 6 touchdowns with 856 yards. Not to mention Superstar K AJ Osborne with 1,200 yards and 8 grabs. Kenneth Murray ended up being a massive offseason signing as he led us in tackles. Still don't get why we don't have any
anybody that can get to the quarterback. How do we have a top five defense? So crazy enough, as a freaking rookie, Caleb Williams did come in ninth in MVP voting. How didn't he win rookie of the year? I mean, don't be mistaken, pretty ecstatic that we had one, two, and three in the voting. Not to mention number five as well. But really, how did Caleb not win it with 40 passing touchdowns? Now, I've got to see how much some of these rookies overalls improve this season. No big deal. Caleb's just already a superstar X Factor as an 87 overall rookie. Xavier Worthy, unfortunately, is only a star, but at least he's up to an 81 overall. And we got Malik Neighbors up to an 82. Braylon Allen up to a 78, and he'll get better and better as time goes along. Also got some defenders slowly but surely getting better. I think JC Jackson became a superstar somehow. Team up to an 86 overall with an 85 offense and an 88 defense. Now, what are the odds we can actually make it all the way here in season number two? Can we at least just not get first rounded? Like, that would be kind of anticlimactic. And we did get a two touchdown victory. Caleb Williams as a rookie actually outperformed Justin Herbert, as did rookie Braylon Allen outperformed the veteran Austin Eckler. Now, can we go and beat the squad that stole the division from us? <laughs> freaking lost. That gosh dang Aaron Rodgers. I think it's safe to say it was the running game this time to let us down. I'm telling you though, boys, this is just the beginning. The Jags with an absolute beatdown, and I'm telling you right now, this is gonna be us in the next three seasons. Now that it's the offseason, I wanna go and see if anybody's development trait improved. Now offensively, the only improvement we had was Xavier Worthy moving up to Superstar. And we'll take the extra upgrade. And strange stuff going on defensively as Matthew Judon moves back to Superstar X Factor, but we had JC Jackson lose his Superstar and go down to normal. Pretty depressing. But luckily, we have $122 million available. But some of that cash is gonna have to go to these players trying to renegotiate the contracts. Now, first, we're gonna accept Tyler Lindenbaum's fifth-year option. Same thing here with Kayvon Thibodeau. Now, tough decisions are gonna have to be made here. Like, starting with Jabril Peppers, though, without a shadow of a doubt, I wanna bring him back for three years. I think I'm just gonna give him the base offer. I wish they all were that simple. Now, Christian Barmore here. He's super interested in returning, which simplifies the decision a little bit more, because I can just give him a nice little four-year base offer, and hopefully he'll accept and he does. Now, Jelani Tavai here. He's a guy that I might would have just let go, but since he has so much interest in returning, like, I feel like we could get him on the cheap here. We'll actually even drop the offer just just the Ted and our man's back. Now I could care less if all these guys went into free agency, but I do feel like it's pretty vital that we bring back Matthew Judon, and it kind of sucks he has no interest in returning. So I will give you two years, because you'll probably suck at the end of the contract. I will give you 10 mil a season. I'll up the bonus to like seven mil. Is this enough for him to accept? Boo! I mean, I could place the franchise tag on him, which would be quite a bit of money. You know what? I'm gonna do it, because he's probably gonna suck after this season anyway. So I think we did good there. Ooh, do I bring him back on the cheap since he has interest in returning? Give you a two-year deal just for depth purposes, and he made it simple on us. We still got 70 million to spend. Hopefully this free agency, there's actually gonna be some quality free agents to spend that moolah on. I mean, you got a few quality players out there, but nobody I'm really interested in, to be honest. Like, David and Joku really wants to join us. You already have Mike Gesicki, though? Like, would this be a waste of money to try to get him on a cheap? I guess I'll try it. Now, Stephon Gilmore really wants to join us. And with JC Jackson regressing, like, I feel like this would be a smart one-year contract. Ryan Stonehouse is one of the best punters in the league, so, like, why not offer him? And we could go ahead and try to get a superstar kicker while we have the money to spend. And we're his one and only offer. I mean, I know we have a ton of money that we can spend, but, like, I don't feel like it's worth it unless we do get Wyatt Teller here. Like, I know we got a youngster behind him, but I'd be willing to give him a fat little contract for a couple seasons. I mean, if he doesn't accept, it's not gonna be the end of the world. So I think from here, we're just gonna evaluate all of our offers. And we do end up getting David Njoku, Stefan Gilmore, and our brand new punter and kicker. I'm telling you, the return of Stefan's gonna be glorious. Wyatt Teller hasn't accepted. He has a ton of offers out there. Like, do I just bump it up a little bit just for the heck of it? 
He probably won't sign with us. It won't be the end of the world. Yeah, he went to Carolina. We just signed him, and David already has an upgrade. So at this point, all that's left to improve the team is another draft, which I think my strategy here is just going to be take the best player available, which unfortunately we don't get to pick until pick 26. Now, I have to say the only player that really stands out to me is this left tackle here who could be the long-term Trent Brown replacement. So we'll take a shot here on Dion Hearns, and at least it's not a stinker. Now, I have to say this cornerback looks like he has some potential. Bad play wreck, but I think he's worth taking a shot on. Actually, might have been a huge L. I mean, I think I'm just gonna go with another left tackle here. He by far is my favorite player on the entire board, so why not just stock up on offensive linemen? And he's another hidden development player at the end of the third round. How did nobody take him yet? Now, Conrad Goodrich doesn't look too shabby at outside linebacker, and I mean, I guess it is the fourth round. Like, there's so so many freaking corners on this board and they're all projected to go high but they all suck like we do need corner pretty bad so i wouldn't mind taking a second one maybe one of them will be half decent maybe not what are the odds i can get a sleeper here with almost a mr irrelevant pick i'm just gonna go with the top defensive tackle on my board biggest problem i see here is he looks like he's about 73 already no shot this draft class is anywhere near last year's oh uh, what the f Frick? This bust of a corner was a 78 overall? Okay, maybe that was a good draft. Into 2025, and this is the current state of the offense, which I don't think it's ever been better. And you have the current state of the defense, which I think think I might actually make another move or two here in the preseason to try and go all out to win that Lombardi here in year number three. A freaking blockbuster just went down in the NFL as we ship on JC Jackson, Mike Kosicki, Jawan Bentley, a second, third, and fourth for one of the best middle linebackers in the entire league. One more insane move as we add Kenny Clark from the Packers for Christian Barmore, the corner we just drafted, our backup center of future first, third, and fourth. Mental. I told you fellas that we were going to go all out here in year three. And we got the defense up to an 88 overall. So if this young offense can just continue to improve, I'm telling you this could already be the season. We go on a legitimate Super Bowl run. I hope after all the hype, we don't have an absolute stinker this season. Hopefully we can take back the division from the Jets. And we did, although be it we lost one more game than last year. Our offense improved slightly from last year. What happened to our defense? Well, we definitely didn't throw for as many touchdowns this year. At least our running back eclipsed the 1,000 yards. Another 1,000 season from Xavier Worthy, although a little disappointed in Neighbors' production. I mean, eight touchdowns is still fine. Our new signing, David Njoku, was our only player with double-digit touchdowns. I'm worried about KJ Osborne's progression, though. Finally, we had somebody get double-digit sacks for once. I mean, we got this squad up to an 88 overall. Like, come on. Caleb's up to a 92. Braylon Allen up to an 82. Everybody on the O-line's at least an 80. And this defense continues to look tasty. If after all that, we get knocked out by the Buffalo Bills in the first round, I am going to cry. Freaking shedding tears. Caleb, you can't turn the ball over twice against the Bills. We allowed four rushing touchdowns to James Cook. Like, how? Not gonna lie, this one stings. We only have two more seasons after this to win the Super Bowl, or I fail the challenge, and it'd be goodbye to my mutt coins. Oh, what an unusual Super Bowl winner. Into the offseason, and I have noticed a few changes, like our offensive guard here improving up the Superstar. Also had David Njoku improve the Superstar, but at the same time we had KJ Osborne regress. Ooh, and defensively, we had Matthew Judon go all the way down to star. We had Kenneth Murray lose his star, so that's quite depressing. But boys, I'm locking the frick in for this offseason. I'm about to make the best moves physically possible so we can go all out and win that freaking Super Bowl next year. I'm calling my shot right now. Thankfully, no massive contracts we have to renegotiate here. Like, I do have to accept Christian Gonzalez's fifth-year option. Now, Marcus Jones here, like, I would like for him to come back, but since he's not interested in returning, I'm not gonna give him the fattest contract ever. So if he leaves, he leaves. And to my surprise, he's returning. Honestly, with Matthew Judon getting on up there 
different age. Like, he can move on. Now, Jack Jones here, since he is interested in returning, like, I'll give him a nice little base to your offer. Actually, I'll drop it a little bit. That's fine. And again, the rest of these guys can go. Really hope there's some big free agents to spend money on here, because I got 40 mil in the bank. Come on, please be a good class. Not gonna lie, it's a quite the stinker. Since the running game has been so disappointing, do like, I just spend money on Brian Robinson? It's not even asking for too much. So you know what? I'll give you a three-year offer. He's interested in joining. So if he accepts, he accepts. If he doesn't, he doesn't. And we're by far his best offer. Now, honestly, I wouldn't mind adding Roger McCreary to the secondary, but he's not interested. We'll try, though. The Raiders got us beat. You know what? I'll up it just a little bit more. Ah, screw you. I'm not going any higher than that. Now, there's nobody really to replace Matthew Judon. Like, maybe we just use somebody that we already have at left outside linebacker. And honestly, I think that's all we're gonna do. Because these free agent classes just really aren't too enticing. At least we signed our one target. I mean, the offense still looks fantastic. We just gotta figure out what to do with our outside linebacker positions. Now, here in the draft, we don't pick until 24. And they're really isn't any outside linebackers I feel like can replace Matthew Judon. Like, this guy definitely looks solid, but he'll probably fall to the second. So, do I actually just try and trade this first round pick to get the Matthew Judon replacement? I mean, we're definitely getting some good offers for this pick. Let's just see what your boy can whip up. I mean, to be fair, that is such a big freaking glaring need. And we found a replacement from the LA Rams, Byron Young, who is a superstar X Factor. We did have to trade away a first and Joss Uche, but we did at least get a future second in return. Now, at least that outside linebacker that I wanted to draft is still there. Hopefully, he's got some substance to him, and he is a hidden development player. An absolute gem. Now, we've got a half-decent looking defensive end here in the fourth round. Oh my god, he's actually a gem. It's hard to hit on defensive ends in this game. Decent little well-rounded tight end here in the sixth round. Oh my god, we hit on another one. Now, we have the 24th selection here in the seventh round. Like, there's no way we get another gym. And there's actually a decent little projected undrafted free agent linebacker here. Like, he's not hidden development, but I'm excited to see his overall. He's definitely not as star-studded as I expected, but at least we got some hidden gems. Into 2026, and with an offense that should have an improved running game, I'm really hoping we can put up a ton of points. And I think we have seen this defense with a little bit more talent, but it still should be a top 10 unit. Now, I do want to do some scouting and see if there are some moves I can make before the season starts to improve this roster. So somehow we just turned this package into Danielle Hunter. Now I think it's safe to claim that this defense should be a top 10 unit. Up to an 88 overall with an 89 defense now. I just really hope we can go on a legitimate run this season because if we don't, it'll all come down to next year in season 5. Thank God 13 and 4, which is our best season yet, which for the first time in 4 years earns us a first round buy, which is good, you know, because it seems like we get first rounded every year. At least we got a ton of useful upgrades going into the playoffs. So we go from a bottom half offense to number one, and we also had a top 10 defense. I mean, talk about an efficient season here from Caleb Williams. And in terms of yards, the running game didn't improve that much, but we uh, scored a lot more touchdowns on the ground. And what a freaking season from Xavier Worthy. 1,500 yards to 17 touchdowns. Downs. KJ Osborne goes over a thousand again. Malik Neighbors still hasn't hit a 1K season. All I have to say is thank you. God, we got these two. We actually had the league's MVP this season. And Xavier Worthy got robbed for Offensive Player of the Year. Couldn't even win Coach of the Year, man. Like, with the really good season, and with everybody obviously having high morale, the team's overall is up to a 91 across the freaking board. Without a shadow of a freaking doubt, this is going to be our best chance to make it to a Super Bowl. You can't script it any better than this. A chance to get revenge on the Bills for knocking us out last year and if we win this we are one game shy of making it to the Super Bowl just make sure we get rid of Josh Allen first let's go what
what a freaking statement. Caleb making up for that two interception performance last year. See what happens when you don't allow four rushing touchdowns to James Cook. No shot. We let the 10 and 7 Raiders get in our way of our Super Bowl dream. Come on, please. Not like this. Not like this. Let's go! Another respectable 27 to 17 victory. Bro, I didn't even think about it being a Caleb Williams Drake May matchup. Safe to say, though, we made the right pick. And you couldn't have script this Super Bowl matchup any better. Oh, you best believe I'll take these upgrades. Maybe our best strategy here is to let the Falcons go on top 28 to 3. But if we win this game, we've completed the challenge. If we lose, literally everything comes down to the fifth and final season. It's a Caleb Williams Jordan Love matchup. But here we go, friends, with the click of a button. Get off to a fast start, please. 7-0, we're losing. We score. 7-all. Come on, defense. Step up, man. At least our offense is putting up points. We have a chance to take the lead. We take the lead before halftime. The Falcons tie things up, though. 24-7, 24-all, bro. This is going to be an all-time classic. We take the lead. The Falcons answer, though. Come on. We get a field goal. The Falcons, did they score? What happened? We win! An absolute thriller that comes down to the death. But somehow, some way, we beat Jordan Love and the Falcons. As in just four seasons, we have successfully brought the Lombardi back to New England. And I get to save my mud coins! Now, hopefully, you enjoyed enough to subscribe to the channel. And if you did, you can click right here to watch me rebuild the Chicago Bears, which was actually a little bit more difficult than this one.